Okay, so I make that 8 o'clock, so thanks everyone for dialing in. Um, this was just meant to be a, a run-through, really, of um, a seminar that I'm presenting tomorrow night. Um, I've got about 54 people coming to that at the moment, and it's a fairly local event, so if anyone's around, um, I'm based in Warwickshire, it's going to be at the King's Court Hotel in Ulster, so if anyone's around for that and wants to come, then by all means, please um, send me a message after the webinar, and I'll give you the details for that, it's free, um, I don't usually do free seminars, but um, on this occasion I'm doing one, I've had so many people ask me to do one, so here it is. Um, so thanks for tuning in, um, if possible, if you guys could give me some feedback afterwards, um, like I said, it's just a run through for tomorrow, and lots of people asked me to kind of share this anyway, so I thought, okay, well I might as well to, uh, kill two birds with one stone, so what I'm going to go through is I'm going to go through um, how to generate leads using uh, both Facebook and also LinkedIn as well, oh, we've got a question. <laughs> that's okay thanks Keely she says thanks for doing this um, if anyone's got any questions by the way please feel free to ping them at me as we go along or we can wait to the end it doesn't really matter to be honest whatever works for you guys um, I'm going to record this I know I said I wasn't um, but because you've given up your time to do this for me I'll send you all our recording of the people who've actually dialed in so you'll get that afterwards I'll also send you out a copy of the slides as well so don't worry about scribbling down anything just sit back and listen and let me know if you've got any questions okay so um so tonight I'm going to tell you about my story so far uh, and then, like I said, I'm going to go into the key features of Facebook and LinkedIn and show you how to generate leads. And then I'm going to show you how I've been generating leads for my own business using um, a pretty new method on LinkedIn. Uh, we've got a question. One sec. <laughs> no problem, Sarah. Now everyone's thanking me. It's okay, guys. You don't need to thank me. <laughs> I'm here to help you all. Okay, so... Um, this is my story so far. So for those of you who don't know me, my name's Louise Haightley, and there I am at the bottom there with my daughter, Evie. Um, I'm a tax advisor by trade, so I was working in the tax industry for over 10 years. I got to the stage with my own job after 10 years of climbing the ladder. You know, I've worked all over the place, so I worked in London for six years. I became a fully qualified tax advisor. I got to the stage within my um, career that, you know, I was all right. I was happy doing the job I was doing, but there are certain things about the corporate environment that I really didn't like, and I kept coming head to head with these type of issues, the same type of issues. You know, they didn't, they didn't want you to spread your wings. They didn't want you to be entrepreneurial. They wanted you to do things pretty much their way. And to be honest, I pretty much got to the stage where I kind of had enough. Yeah, the money was good. I didn't feel that secure as um, you should do in a job, I suppose. And I decided to leave and set up my own practice. So that's what I did. So um, I left on the 28th of February two years ago. And I set up my own tax company on the 1st of March. So I've been self-employed now for way over two years. So um, that's going well. And I guess the next step was to try and find a local networking group so I did that I joined BNI um, if people don't know what BNI is it's basically a networking group where a group of professionals get together every single week and they share contacts and they share business so for that privilege you pay an annual membership of something like a thousand pounds plus you pay for your breakfast and then what happened was um, the companies in the room were fairly small and it also became apparent that a lot of them weren't using social media. Now at this stage I was using LinkedIn um, quite heavily for my own purposes, for my tax business and I got a lot of leads using it so you know I was generating 20-30 leads every month um, just by doing a few things every day and I'll show you that a bit later what I was doing. Now um, it got to the stage where um, the contacts in the room were actually coming to me asking me to help them generate leads for their business. So in the end, I thought, well, 
um, I may as well set up another company and another service offering, offering um, support and advice to businesses about how they can set up their own um, lead generation system. So that's what I did. Oops, sorry, clicked the wrong button there. And um, that's what I did. So on the right there is a little picture of my doggy Tia, and I named the company We Want Leads. So that's how it's kind of evolved, really. You know, I still do my tax work. Um, and then I've also got a separate company that offers advice and help to all kinds of businesses about generating leads and social media, really. Um, and then um, I had my daughter in October. And of course, for all your parents out there, you know that that kind of changes your world entirely. Um, and I'll tell you a bit about what I got up to um, around the point I got pregnant with her a bit later on. So... That's me in a nutshell, and I guess I just wanted to highlight um, the kind of companies that I've either worked with or I've been able to get in touch with or I've generated leads for some of the clients that I've worked for. So, you know, um, I've worked with some pretty big names. I've been able to get in front of some quite senior people just by using social media, mainly LinkedIn, to be honest, because this was more for my tax role. But... Um, you know, it just shows that you can get in front of people who are senior in these senior positions. For example, Poundland, um, I was able to get in touch with the founder of Poundland, um, get his mobile number and have a chat with him about how they can use social media to generate leads. So, you know, it's all pretty exciting. The kind of names that I've been working with are um, pretty prestigious and pretty chuffed with that, to be honest. So that's just a little introduction to what I've done. Um, and so I thought I'd run you through why I use Facebook. So um, it's the world's largest social media platform at the moment. Um, it's completely free to use. I don't actually pay for Facebook advertising. I know you can do. And there are ways of actually paying and sponsoring ads, for example, on Facebook. I don't actually do that. Um, I am probably going to look into that as a topic in itself. But at the moment, most of the advertising I do is completely free. You don't have to pay for anything, you know. So I focus on that kind of um, market because most of the individuals I work with certainly um, are startup companies, you know, with um, with low budgets to actually invest. There are 1.19 billion active users on LinkedIn worldwide. Now, for those of you who use Facebook, I'm sure there's probably, you know, a good 10% of those that are fake profiles. We come up against it almost every day, you know, fake profiles, people with no pictures, that type of thing. So I don't know how true that figure is, but it's pretty staggering. Um, apparently, the average user spends on average uh, 40 minutes a day on Facebook. Um, for those of you on the call that use Facebook, I'm sure you're probably using it for about 15 hours a day <laughs> or at least checking it. Um, smartphone users apparently check Facebook 14 times a day. Um, I probably check it once every minute. <laughs> um, and it generates something like 1.4 million in revenue every single hour. That's US dollars, which is just staggering really. 79% um, of users are accessing Facebook from their mobile. So just be mindful that if you've got a website that you're transferring or if you're putting an ad out on Facebook, then make sure it looks okay on a mobile. I know that's pretty basic to say, but I have seen websites out there or um, advertising methods that people are using where it's not clear on a mobile. So just be mindful of that. Um, and every 15 minutes, there are over 49 million posts, something like 49.433 million posts or 3 million posts per minute. So that just gives you an idea on how big this platform is. There's lots and lots to it. Um, I'm not going to cover absolutely everything because I haven't got time, um, but I'm going to cover the main areas where you can generate leads from. So there are lots of ways to generate leads. So I use a number of methods, to be honest. So you can use your personal profile. Um, and it just depends on what type of business you have on how you actually generate leads. So I use my personal profile quite a lot because 
for me, my business and what I do with social media and the other bits and bobs that I do is all about me and my brand. So I lead with who I am first rather than the company. I think that's more important. So if you've got a brand that's unique, make sure it's you leading it rather than a company name. You can also set up your own page as well. And I've got um, my own page, which I can give you the link to, where I actually show you how to set up a page. But it's pretty um, standard stuff. Um, you can set up your own group. Now, what I usually advise between a page and a group is that a page is useful if it's more company orientated, where a group is more useful if it's more um, knowledge based. So, for example, I've got a group that is about attraction marketing. It's about showing people how to use attraction marketing to get people to buy from you. You know, it's all about providing information. I don't sell anything in there. Um, and then you can post and share information in other interest groups as well. So I'll just show you quickly for those of you. I know there's a few people on the phone that aren't you really used to using um Facebook at all so I'll just show you so when you go on to your home page down the left hand side um, just a couple of different there'll be all your groups at the top and then pages there um, create pages there and you just go through the motions and um, answer the questions create group is there as well so I've got a couple of different groups um, the other thing that I said you can do is you can search for groups that and pages that were within your interest. So, for example, I know I've got quite a few network marketers on the phone. So what I tend to do is I look for people who are public figures within the industry. So, for example, uh, Robert Kazaki. So, you know, you'll be looking for people who are working with a network marketing so you know you'll be looking for people who are commenting on his posts you know 2.3 thousand uh, people these are the type of people I'd imagine you need to speak to people who are being proactive and looking for other leaders looking for people with knowledge equally people like Eric or and things like that so you know there's lots and lots of places where you can find people so again you know you can look at the kind of people who are commenting on his posts you can see what they're saying you know you can connect with these people you can interact with these people there are lots of different groups as well that you can look for so you know you work from home type groups um, you can look for networking groups as well. Um, there's groups that you can look for in your area, for example, as well. So, you know, what you want to do is you want to find, um, firstly, you want to um, think about who your target market is. And then what you want to do is you want to find out where those people hang out. And then what you want to do, you want to find a way of interact with those people. Simple as that. Okay, so what I've done is I've put up a few case studies. So this isn't going to be that relevant to that many people, but it's just to give an idea of the kind of things you can do um, if you've got a trade. So, for example, one of the clients that, uh, one of the contacts that's coming tomorrow has her own green grocers, like a little local store. So I've put just together a little case study to show the type of things that you can be doing using Facebook. So equally, you can transfer this to a business where you sell products as well. So, for example, you know, loyalty cards, they're a really, really great way of making sure you get re repeat business. So if you've got a business which, which is project based, give someone something uh, for nothing if they say buy 10 um, projects from you. You know, you could give a percentage discount. You could give a free project. You could give a gift, that type of thing. People generally love free stuff. They love the fact that you know you're you'll um, interact with them, and you want them to be a loyal customer of yours, and tell them that they're a loyal customer of yours as well. People really enjoy um, knowing that they're a good customer. Um, you can do things like ask customers to post reviews. So for a discount, that one works really well. I've done that before. You know, 
um, get them to buy a product from you for full price and then if they're willing to give you a review of your products then give them a discount okay so competitions work really well as well I've done these quite a few times so if you've got a page the best way of getting likes on your page is to run a competition to get people to like and share your page that works really really well you can target local groups for things like that as well um, you can post on Facebook so what I always tell people if you've got a project based business don't always post about the project, post about what the project can do. So for example, you know, with the green grocers, they sell fruits and vegetables. So my idea is posting about recipes. You know, people don't go into a supermarket to buy uh, food necessarily. They go into a supermarket to buy food to cook um, for a family. So you know, if you can show them different ideas of doing that, then um, that that should position you well as well so the other idea is kind of linked to that so set up your own group so offering recipe ideas for people who are on diet so equally if you've got a, a business selling diet products then you know a, a group with some ideas for slimming down is a really good place to position yourself um, uh, posting in other local groups for customers so I do use this method quite a bit actually so it's you see people posting in groups quite a lot and there's a difference between posting in groups with just a buy me join my business type of post or you're posting in other local groups for um, to collect people so what I mean by that is either you're say posting in the group to offer people something so are you offering them a free project a competition are you offering them the chance to win your group to learn something about about your product and your company or why are you just spamming that group saying buy me buy me now type of thing so there's a very clear distinction between what works when you're posting in local groups and what doesn't so just be mindful of that um, project range so this isn't going to be relevant to you but it's just an idea so um, offering things outside the norm so you know in this instance my idea was offering juice packs or just add meat type boxes but I'm sure there are other things that I could probably think of for you in your businesses as well so there are some other ideas there as well which I won't go into now um, but they'll be relevant tomorrow of course when the lady's there <laughs> Um, and similarly as well, I put one together for what works for an online business as well. So I've got a page that I've set up, which doesn't necessarily have to be about your company. So there I've put set up a page or a group. So you see a lot of groups on Facebook about um, topics that aren't related to the company at all. So for example, there are lots of people who because their target market are say working from home mothers they set up groups about working from home mothers and share useful articles and things like that so you don't necessarily have to always sell the company or sell yourself it can just be on a topic that you've got a common interest um, with with your target audience so try and think outside of the box when you're setting up groups and setting up pages um, and similar rules apply really so oh, I've got two two um, boxes the same now change that for tomorrow so things like competitions work well whatever business you're in and um, I also run webinars like this um, I'm also running the seminar tomorrow so I'm showing people how to use social media to generate leads for their business which is what I do you know Give people some information up front about yourself and what you can do without actually selling a product or a service first. So what a lot of people make a mistake of on Facebook is always posting about the business and about the company without really adding any value. So if you step back from that, if you're wanting people to buy a product and a service from you, you need to give them something extra. So you need to be showing them um, if it's a project based business and you need to be showing them reviews of the project you know reviews are really good 
testimonials from other people about the product you know if it's a project that impacts someone's appearance in some way for a positive effect then you want to be using before and after photos of those um, of those products that they've used and then obviously linking it back to giving them a discount um, if they're willing to provide that review that works really well it keeps them in communication with you as well which is what you want you know you want to be in regular contact with your customers uh, branding yourself I do this a lot um, a lot of people miss out on this so get people to know you first before you tell them about the company so whether I'm chatting to people uh, whether that's on a one-to-one -one basis or you know as a group I'll always try to let them into who I am first tell them about yourself your story how you got to be where you are people will only buy from you if they like trust and know you so for example if you're posting really negative comments on Facebook all the time then people might not necessarily gel with you <laughs> um, if for people to get to know you as well make sure you show them who you are as a person you know don't let it always be about the business or the projects that you're selling show them your life let them in um, when you open the doors on social media um, you kind of let people into your life so show them a bit of that as well it will break down the barriers it will show them there's a reason for to trust you on what you do because you know you're you're a human being you can relate to them on that level you can relate to them as a mother you can relate to them having children that type of thing that's really important and the other thing as well is, is if your business if your business is led by getting people to join you then you really need to show people that you know how to run a business you need to show people your knowledge um, I do a lot of webinars like this and I also have my own YouTube channel and I like to share little videos of how to generate leads and how to grow the business and how to do bits and bobs I also have an email campaign that I send out as well which um, every now and again if something interesting pops up I'll send it out to the people who are registered just to show them snippets on how they can build their business I can guarantee that if you give people information that they usually have to go out and find themselves or they'd have to pay for then they'll come back to you um, they'll ask you first about a business you know they might not necessarily join you in everything that you do but you'll be at the forefront of their minds okay that was that slide um, okay and people always ask me what are the best times of day to post so I personally because of having Evian and how busy I am um, I personally tend to post before around 8 o'clock or after about 7 or 8 in the, e in the evening um, I do post around lunchtime if I have time so try to post at least three times a day but don't always post for the sale like I said post reviews about the projects or the services that you offer um, post useful information um, about yourself post useful information about how to grow a business post interesting articles about the industry you're in as well the other thing that works well as well is to post success stories um, so you know if you're working with people in your team who are more successful than you then make sure you share that with your audience people want to follow success so do that we have a question one sec joy is it being recorded and yes it is joy um, I'm recording it for the people who've logged in so I'll send you a copy afterwards don't worry um okay so what should I post so just kind of touched on this so allow people to get the to know the real you so like I said before people will buy from people um, if you're constantly posting or you're being led by a name of a company then people um, may not be able to see past that um, they'll just see the name of the company and they'll just either a former opinion or they'll go off and Google it make sure you show them um, how you're doing with the business what what you're adding to the business what your strengths are when you're running that business 
Um, and I put there relate to your target audience. So, you know, if your target market, like for me, is busy, busy mums or people with businesses, then make sure you relate to them. You know, share articles, share about your life that's going to relate to them. Also, um, think about why you do your business. Why did you join your business? Why did you start your business? People love stories. Um, some of the best leaders in um, any business, for example, are really, really great storytellers. So get really good at telling your story, you know, whether that's by video, whether that's in a message, whatever way, just get creative. You know, there's some really good software tools out there. Um, I've recently started using one called Smilebox. It's really good at creating really little catchy images to put on Facebook. So that's worth a check out if you after some ideas. Okay, so that's pretty much uh, Facebook in a nutshell. I mean, there's lots and lots of features on there. Um, I just want to show you around a few things. So basically, the key things that you need to focus on when you've got any type of business is growing your network. So growing your network with the right type of people. Um, and what I did, I mean, this is my um, this is my profile. So what I've got is I've got my own page there, which is Louise Haightley. So make sure if you have got a page that you link your page to your profile if that's how you want to lead with your personal profile. That way, when people are looking at you, they're going to be able to see what you do um, straight away. They're going to be able to click on your page and they're going to be able to see what you've got in your page and what you're posting in there. Um, I started off when I started using Facebook, by the way, I had something like 200 friends, um, which weren't necessarily all friends. They were just people that you kind of pick up along the way. I, I didn't really see Facebook as a good opportunity to generate leads, to be honest. I just saw it as a social media platform where people share what they eat for dinner. I didn't really see the benefit of it. And now I've got over 4,000 uh, people within my target audience and I've got um, over 1,100 followers. So, you know, I've built that up over time. I've also got my own group as well. So if you want to check that out, it's um, Louise Hate the Attraction Marketing where I've got over 1,200 members. So this is what you want to be doing. You want to be finding groups where your people hang out. So say, for example, I'm looking for people with online businesses. And the way you grow your network really easily, um, this is the way I did it, is you know, start a discussion. And then you start a friend chain. So what I mean by that is that you speak to your audience. So hi, everybody. Something like hi, everyone. Um, my name is... Um, Louise and then you go on to tell your story so for me my name is Louise and I've got a daughter who's seven months old called Evie I work from home I'm a social media coach and I've also got um, an online business as well I'm looking to network with people in the same position if you'd like to network please add me or please comment and let's uh, network and get chatting. So that's pretty much how I grew my network to over 4,000 people. It's totally free. There are millions and millions of groups on Facebook. I wouldn't like to put a number on it. I'm sure you can tell um, if you Google it, but that's how I grew my network. And then um, getting people, once you've got your network sorted, it's then getting people to engage with you. So um, like I said, I post on my personal profile at least three times a day. You know, I try to post useful in information about, um, you know, webinars that I'm doing. Um, I post information about how you can build your business. Um, I post little um, snippets of videos, little projects I'm working on. I post competitions, like I said before. Um, I also post posts which have a call to action on, so that's quite important. So if you've got a post out and um, you need to tell your audience what what you want to do, what you want them to do with it, so you want to put a call to action. So either you want them to sign up to your email list or you want them to comment yes. 
the reason why you want to get them to make an action so either like your post or like and comment is because of Facebook algorithms so how they work is roughly about 7% of people see your posts um, the way you can get more people seeing your posts is getting getting your post to be more relevant the way you do that is getting people to comment and like your post the more comments and likes you get on your post the more relevant they are and the more people see those posts so just by literally on your post putting comment yes below if you'd like my link you get people commenting and liking you know it's got to be something that people are interested in by the way can't just uh, write that um, hoping that people are going to comment you know on a buy me type um, uh, post the other thing I do as well I don't know whether I've got a post here is if I see there's a picture of me and Evie there and a little right and a little sling um, if you've got a website um, and you want to get more exposure for it and you've got a post where people are going to comment like and share it then make sure you copy and paste your website um, address on there. That will boost your website as well. So all these little tips are ways of getting people to interact with you. And then obviously it's just about having the conversation with somebody. So when I'm having a conversation with somebody about my business, I always just chat to them first. So, you know, get to know that person first. Um, I appreciate time can be sometimes of the essence and you just want to copy and paste loads and loads of things and you don't have time to actually chat to someone that's fine you know there are certain bits of conversations that you'll have with somebody that will be copy and pasteable so what I do for that is I have a separate document set up I won't open my emails because I'll start pinging but I have a separate document set up where I have links to things and I have, you know, explanations about the business, but just in a few uh, a few sentences where when you've got that open, you can copy and paste it so you're not having to sit there typing everything constantly. So that in a nutshell is how I generate leads. The first, the absolute first thing you need to do is to build your network and start giving the people that were in your network exactly what they want you know if people are buying a project they want to see how it works if they're joining a business they want to be sure um, that you're the right person to join in that business because you can show them how to grow that business online so you know show them what they want so that's Facebook in a nutshell I mean I could talk about Facebook for days to be honest so that's probably another course <laughs> for people to come on, but at the moment we haven't got days. We've only got an hour. So we've got done about half an hour on Facebook at the moment. Um, hopefully that's given you a few tips on um, how to use Facebook, or at least how I use Facebook. So I'm going to show you LinkedIn. Um, a lot of people, to be honest, use LinkedIn in completely the wrong way. Um, their impression of LinkedIn is just a online CV you know it's where people like financial advisors accountants people in financial institutes hang out not so you know it's the world's largest business network um, it's got a lot a lot of users on there the last time I checked this figure out something like 332 million so there's not as many as Facebook but because people are on there from a professional background usually and it's more professional on Facebook you'll get a completely different experience you know people are more open to chatting on LinkedIn about experiences um, you find that people are more open to sharing information on LinkedIn and as they are on Facebook and to be honest for those of you that use Facebook to generate leads you'll get kind of a more professional environment so you won't get so many fake profiles you won't get so many odd looking profiles and I don't just necessarily mean odd looking people I'm not discriminating but you know what I mean if you work um, on Facebook you'll get odd random requests off people you know I've had them before where I've had marriage proposals off men women um, all types of different people I'll get people asking me for uh, visas um, people offering me camels to marry me you know I've had lots and lots and lots of weird 
requests and I'm sure you guys have I'm sure you can share some crazy stories as well and um, so you'll get a completely different experience on LinkedIn so it's completely free to use there is a um, premium membership and I'll show you that because it is worth looking at because you can use that for free as well and I'll show you how to get that and um, it's got a goal LinkedIn has to get to three billion users in three years time so you know it's to show I'll put that fact up there just to show that um, they are you know really proactive in growing the platform as well they're constantly changing things and making it better um, more than 61% of people use it as their primary primary professional network and um, the one thing I would say about LinkedIn is a bit slower to get conversations started as in it does have a messenger feature now but it's not as instant as Facebook is for example it's a bit slower so you know you just have to bear with it on that respect and um, two people join LinkedIn every single second and 40% of users check LinkedIn every single day um, and also um, I put a fact up there about um, reviews so on LinkedIn there's a facility to write recommendations ask for recommendations so there's a really good way of showing your users that there's a place to trust you and to use you for whatever business or project service line you're in and according to this fact it's 277% more effective for lead generation as compared to Facebook or Twitter. Now, I don't use Twitter. Um, I haven't quite got my head around Twitter, to be honest. So if anyone has, then message me. Let's chat. <laughs> and that's just an overview of why you should use LinkedIn. Uh, so there are three stages to LinkedIn. And I'm going to show you a really, really quick an easy way of generating leads one that will almost do it on autopilot for you so it'll do it automatically in the background it's one that I use and I have used to generate hundreds and hundreds of leads for my businesses and I'll show you how in a second but there are three stages there are three stages pretty much to any um, marketing uh, or social media platform or plan that you have in place to be honest so the first stage is to plan so plan out who you're going to speak to who who are your target audience if you don't know that then you really need to get to grips with that because the more specific specific you can be on who your target market is the easier it is to find to find them on social media and I'll show you why especially with LinkedIn shortly um, and then it's all about connecting and engaging with them as it is on Facebook you know connecting with them in the right way and engaging it with them in the right way and then of course the profit bit which is what we all want we all want to turn those connections that we've got into money in some way okay so this is an overview of the system that I've been using so I I mean I've used this system for months and months but to be honest because my focus has been on Facebook and um, for the last seven or so months I kind of left LinkedIn to its own devices to be honest for a little while um, just because I think sometimes you can't always run two platforms in successfully in this in the same space of time unless you know what you're doing with them so you know I tend to focus on one at a time um, this method works really well so as you can see before um, this was only two weeks ago as well by the way I started using the system to generate leads for my social media um, seminar which is happening tomorrow night so before I started using this system just two weeks ago I ranked uh, in the top 11% of profile reviews among my connections so to be honest that's probably not bad considering I don't really use LinkedIn you know I go on I used to go on occasionally just to check um, that people didn't want anything um, or I hadn't had any new connections I, I wasn't really that active for the last seven months so I checked in every now and again um, but since using the system I've jumped from number from search ranking position 321 out of 2988 people that's how many connections I've got up to number 15 out of over 3000 so in just about two weeks I've made an additional 84 connections 
Now, those are people that have connected to me. I haven't sent out any connection requests in that time. Those are people that, because of this system that I've used on autopilot, they've connected to me. And most of them have sent me a message or they've, they've been engaging with me. Um, and I've had probably about 20 people, 20 new people that I don't know, register for my social media event tomorrow. So, you know, that's proof that just in two weeks, I've had these additional leads, which is from a system, which is almost an autopilot. And I'm going to show you exactly how it works now. Um, and it's really easy, really, really easy to set up. And um, the most important thing about this is getting your um, LinkedIn profile completely right. And, you know, check mine out. There's a reason I've got mine the way it is and um, why I've written it uh, the way it is and I'll show you why in a minute so you know there are lots and lots of different sections on LinkedIn I haven't got time to go through them all but I'm going to go through the key bits that you need to get right so the first stage is the summary you know you need to write that that's aimed at your audience have a look at mine see what I say and take what you like from that. Always write it from your point of view, though. Don't don't um, copy and paste from someone else's because on social media you always want to be true to yourself. Um, as long as you're being positive, of course. I need to caveat there. Um, um, and then you've got things like recommendations. Make sure you request recommendations where you can. So for me, I've got um, a few different sections on there. So I've got my um, experience with regards to my lead generation, mainly my um, seminars and webinars and clients that I've worked for, um, and then also um, and then also down the bottom things about my tax um, background as well. So have a look have a look at what I've written. I haven't actually written that much for each of my jobs. Um, a lot of people tend to put a lot and lot of information in. Um, their LinkedIn profile try not to put too much information in because it will just scare people off people don't like reading a lot of content the other useful section is skills and endorsements so keep them brief um, keep them to key headings that you think people will search for when they're searching for you in particular um, and then you've got things like education they're not that important to be honest um, and then things like volunteer, causes you care about. Those are the type of things that um, make you come across as a human being, which, again, is what you need to do when you're using social media. Sorry, I'm just scrolling to the top. I hope that's not sent your eyes for any. Um, the other thing I do as well is I write posts on um, LinkedIn as well. They're going to get you more exposure. They're going to get people looking at what you do. Oh, got hand up I think no I think someone put their hand up sorry to ask a question okay never mind okay so this is how I generate leads so sorry first of all what I should say is there's a section below your uh, oops yeah back and um, below your name call your headline so here it is here so for me for example I've been promoting my local event on tomorrow night about social media to generate leads. So I've been saying ask for an invite. So what you do then is once you've got your headline right, so make sure you speak to your audience about your project or your service. And the best type of headlines that work uh, well are where you're either offering something for free that people are going to need, whether you're saving someone time, bother, or money so make sure it's um, actually speaking directly to your audience and then what you want to do is you use this advanced search function here to actually find who your audience are so I'll just walk you through how I do mine and then hopefully you can see how it relates to your own business okay so bear with me what one second so for me um i've been looking for people um who have business development in their title um 
always put current I don't know why there's a current past or past not current that doesn't make any sense to me um, and then you can search by location so you know LinkedIn is available in lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of different countries so if you've got a business that's gl global then this is going to be really useful for you because you're going to be able to speak to those people directly and then what I've been doing is I've been looking for people locally because obviously they're not going to want to travel far to come to my seminar and then wait for it to bring up your search results so that at the moment any uh, returns 252 search results you can actually play around with these different search functions to make that number bigger or smaller or whatever you're looking for now what I do and um, there are different tiers of connections in LinkedIn and I'll just go through those briefly because then this search will make more sense to you uh, first tier connections are ones that are your connection so the people that you're connected to and you can openly chat to them and have a conversation with your second tier connections are people that you're not yet connected to so for me I always focus on those um, group members are what they what it says on the tin so they're people who are within groups that you may or may not want to speak to and third tier are everyone else um, now third tier are harder to connect with so I wouldn't necessarily click that as my target audience and then all you do here is you click on this button that says also visit these profiles okay so for now my subscription for the free for the freebie of this um, add-on has actually expired so I'm just going to do it for free now what this um, little system does and I can circulate details of this if you're interested in this contact me and let me know you're interested it goes through automatically and it views that person's profile and I'll show you the impact of that in a second um, so what it's doing it's almost like a friendly cold call it's putting your name in front of these people um, without actually doing anything so what happens is when someone logs into LinkedIn up here it will tell that person that so-and-so has viewed your profile now what people do I find is because people are generally curious they will either look at your profile back and decide that they want to connect with you and have a chat with you because what you say on your profile is interesting and engaging or what you've got in your headline you know my headline said about my social media uh, seminar tomorrow and they'll want to gauge with you or they'll want an invite to that or they'll just ignore you of course you know you always get those people but I've had like I said 84 people connect with me um, just based on um, running this little program for two weeks and you can do this in the background as well so the ideal position of course is when you've ran this little add-on is that people want to connect with you so here I've got two pending um, invitations and then what you do is um, I usually accept them and then I will send them a message so just something brief like Hi Samantha, Ooh, I can never type when I'm on a live webinar, <laughs> thanks for connecting, how are you, something simple like that and you can save all these down, you know, you don't have to keep typing them all the time, I've just typed that up because I don't want to open um, my emails at the moment or you can go one stage further as well, so you know if you if you see that someone's got a common interest as you or they're doing something that's going to be useful in your business you know comment on it say oh hi Graham thanks for connecting I see you're an owner and creative director at No Excuses Digital that's interesting um, I'm involved in social media as well is it worth having a chat type of thing you know people are always open well people are usually open <laughs> having conversations where there's going to be a mutual purpose so 
what I mean by that is if you can show someone that there may be something that you can work on together um, then people are more open to having a conversation with you so again just same message you know and then wait for people to respond so like I said I've had loads and loads of people view my profile I'll show you how many um, just by using this little add-on how you rank by profile review so when you go into um, profile and who's viewed your profile there's lots of little tabs that um, click up who's viewed your profile who's viewed your post and how you rank for profile reviews so when I go into how I rank for profile reviews it will bring up how I rank so there you see you rank in the top 1% 15 out of 3072 you can also look for people who are in your industry as well so professionals like me um, oh I'm actually number one there that's cool and um, you can actually see how you compare to your competitors for example and see see how you rank in the search rank uh, ratings now the best thing to do with this little program that I use is to run it absolutely every single day so um, it's initially free uh, for two weeks and you can search up to a maximum of a thousand profiles and it does it on autopilot like I said after that it reduces it to 100 a day but still you're going to get some value out of that um, it does work best by the way if you use a premium account which usually is chargeable um, but you can use it for free so if you go to your home page so just by clicking on your photo up here it should say use LinkedIn premium for free now you can use it for free for a whole month um, you have to put in your credit card details when you use it for free but what I suggest is once you've signed up for it you put your credit card details in you can then go and cancel it straight away um, and then use it for the whole month for free even though you've cancelled it but make sure you cancel it straight away the reason I say that is that if you don't want to pay for it on an ongoing basis and I don't blame you because it's about I think it's about £30 a month um, cancel it straight away because even though you can cancel it um, afterwards there is a bit of a time delay I did this before I, I used to use it all the time I tried cancelling it and there was a bit of a time delay and I got charged an extra month so if you're going to use it then cancel it straight away and you can cancel it in your settings so in privacy and settings once you've set it up there's an uh, option to actually cancel it so there look um, So there it says my um, subscription has been cancelled. Make sure you take a screen grab of the fact it's been cancelled so you've got some backup to show that you've actually cancelled it. So it works better on the premium. Like I said, um, it's free. It's free for the whole month. You get this little add-on um, and I can send you the link if you find it useful for your business to use the add-on for two weeks. I've used it for two weeks and those are the results that I've got you know I've jumped from number 321 up to number 15 um, I've had let's have a look how many profile reviews I've had just to give you an idea oops wrong one bear with me I've had 158 profile reviews in a week um, it's actually projected to be 282 based on my current activity so that's almost 300 people looking at your profile so as long as you've got your profile right um, then you should you should get people connecting to you and being interested in what you do and of course as long as you're speaking directly to your target market so if after the call you're interested in how you get started on this then I do have some step-by-step -step guides on what you do. What I've done is I've um, put them in um, these set of notes. So what, you, what I can do is I can circulate them to you um, so you know what you're doing.
Um, I won't go through them all now because obviously it's just words on paper, but you can read them at a later date. Um, I put a slide in there as well about following up. A lot of people forget to follow up to people. And I just want to remind people of a simple fact. So 80% of sales are made on the 5th to 12th contract. So what I do is I have a really, really simple system of a date um, in a spreadsheet. And then I have a person's name. And then I have a comment on how on what I've spoken to someone about. It's really simple. You know, if you don't like computers, then just get yourself a notepad. But just make a note. Um, the other thing I've been doing as well, which I said I'd share with you, and I think most of the people on the call are network marketers. Yes, looks like you are. <laughs> Hello, network marketers. Um, I've been networking, so I mean, I joined the network marketing industry purely to build my own network. So I joined it. Uh, when did I join it? Probably around about the start of July last year. So I haven't been it that long, yes, less than a year. I joined it purely for the fact um, to put my businesses, my tax and my social media business in front of more people because I figured that people that work from home in the main um, probably aren't that aware of tax implications of setting up a new business. So, you know, I thought it'd be a really, really good um, industry to join just for that. I didn't really see the benefit from a personal point of view and I didn't see that you could earn money from it. You know, I was one of those really skeptical people that looked at it sorry one sec looked at it and just thought, oh no, I don't I don't think it could work for me. But you know it could probably work for the businesses that I'm in to kind of um, position myself and sell some webinars for example. And I did just that to be honest. Oh, I think we got a question. Have we got a question or am I seeing things? Yeah, we got a question. One second. <laughs> Sean Kelly, t -t 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 tax, I'm off. Right, I shall be reporting you to the HMRC. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Please stay on. I'm not going to talk about tax. I'm not going to bore you, I promise. Um <laughs> So, yeah, I can talk about tax if you like, but I'm sure I might send some of you to sleep. That's another webinar anyway. I am thinking about doing another webinar to show people the basics of the tax legislation. <laughs> so, um, you know, stay tuned for that. I know there's a few key uh, bits that people miss when they set up their own businesses, and I think tax is a really key area. Anyway, I'm diverse, and you get me talking about tax, Sean. Don't do this. You don't want to hear it networking okay so throughout the world there are approximately 50 million network marketing distributors so for me this was just like you know i was just like hurrah i found i found all these people that may be interested in my services and they were you know i joined network marketing and within the first month or so of joining it i sold hundreds of webinars so you know i spoke to my audience i got to know them i got to know what they wanted to hear about and I showed them, <laughs> I won't mention your name again, Sean Kelly, don't worry. <laughs> Sorry, I just did, didn't I? I'm being naughty now. Oh, dear. Now, you, now you're messing up my flow. Um, okay, so I joined it, recap, I joined it literally to get in front of my target market, which I did. I sold hundreds of webinars to um, the people who were interested in generating leads, you know, I didn't really see it as a viable place that I could make some money. And then I kind of started looking at the business model and I did start making money. So, you know, I, I joined a business where I built it to five figures in about five weeks. Um, and then I got promoted again in 13 weeks to executive director. But unfortunately, what then happened, unfortunately, fortunately, what, what, however you want to put it, I... Um, I, I became pregnant and um, I had to have some time off after I had my daughter. You know, I was one of those people that thought I'd be able to keep the pace up. I'd be able to work 20 plus hours a day, which I was on my current business at that time doing network marketing. But how wrong was I when I had a baby? I think, you know, most mothers, I think, laughed at me when I said I'd be able to carry on working straight away. Uh, little did I know how much time Little Evie would take up. So, 
you know, I have earned a lot of money from network marketing and it works for me because it puts me in front of people that I necessarily wouldn't probably be able to talk to on a day to day basis. And there's just some facts here about network marketing, you know, so a lot of people overlook it, you know, we get we get a really bad press over uh, pyramid schemes and scamming and things like that, but it's a really, really viable place of not only networking with people who are like-minded and want to really grow their businesses online, but also people that generally want to um, build their businesses as well, you know, and they want to learn and they want to earn money, and those are the type of people that I personally want to work with, people who are entrepreneurial in spirit, in mindset, but also are really going to work for it, um, and I'm sure you're all that way on the phone. So, um, I joined a business recently, and like I said, I joined um, another business previously where I was working 20 plus hours a day. You know, it was really hard to keep the momentum up, keep the team spirit going without spending that amount of time, to be honest. I mean, anyone who's worked for a network marketing company will know um, that it is hard work. And then recently I joined a company um, called Life Tree World where, to be honest, it is really, really straightforward. Um, it's it's still a business, so obviously you still need to put some effort into growing your business as you would anything, you know, generating leads and growing your business and getting people to know, like, and trust you is kind of a job in itself. You know, I'm not going to lie and say it's a really, really easy business um, to run because it's still a business. It still takes time and effort, but it is the easiest um, network marketing business that I've come across anyway in the um, just in 12 months that I've been in network marketing and I just wanted to kind of float the idea really um, there are more and more people joining the industry and there are more people who come from professional backgrounds as well who come from backgrounds where they've already got successful businesses you know they're already um, earning a lot of money um, they're already paying a lot of tax and they just want something that's going to work alongside it, something that's maybe going to put them in front of a whole new audience as well as earning them some money. So I just thought I'd show you briefly this one. So basically, you sign up to this company, um, you do your shopping through them, and you earn money in a number of ways. Now, there are a few, obviously, with any company, there are a few rules that you have to abide by so you know there's a sign up fee for example which covers you know your use of your website um, and then there's also the sign up fee covers like your business um, insurance and things like that so it covers you to um, to conduct your business basically and if you've got a business of your own which I know some of you will have already on the webinar you will know that business insurance itself will cost anywhere in the region of £60 upwards. That's what it cost me for my business insurance, you know. So the sign-up fee is to cover that. And it's not a massive sign-up fee, you know. It's £35. Um, if you were to buy a website off the shelf, you'd probably pay that just for um, hosting fees for a year. Um, probably more actually I think I pay about £10 a month for hosting fees just for one of my websites and there's a range of ways of getting paid so you know there's team bonuses so you get paid um, based on people doing shopping so you sign up you do your shopping through them and then you refer it to friends family colleagues whoever your networks the people you know and they do the same so everyone's just doing the same there's nothing to sell People are just signing up and doing their shopping. So, you know, there's there's a minimum monthly requirement every month, which is to do 100 points worth of shopping, which if you're business minded and you just want to sign up, do your shopping, build a team, earn some money, which to be honest is me. That's what I want to do. I go for the easy life. <laughs> um, you can buy a hamper a hamper of goodies which is £165 and then you're done then all you've got to do is get someone to do the same the reason why I love this business so much is because it's just straightforward you haven't got to sell anything it's just about replicating the same thing over and over and over again and you know the teams are growing really really quickly so I joined um, just about the end of March oh Sean's got his hand up I'm not sure why you've got your hand up, Sean. Do you want to ask a question or go for it, though? Just 
fire it at me. Um, I joined just after the end of March and I've got a team of about 50 people already and I do it very much on a part-time basis. You know, I've got other businesses that I focus on. I've got Evie to look after. I do it very much on a part-time in the evening type of basis or whenever I can, you know, I fit it around things. And these are the type of um, income that you can receive from this business. So bonuses range from £200 a month up to £50,000 per month. Now, I'm not going to lie, the £50,000 is, you know, a longer term goal. But, you know, how many people can say that £50,000 per month is within their reach from their job or from their business? You know, that's that's a lot of work. Um, that's every single month as well um, as long as your targets are met so for me for example I got my £200 bonus in my first month I'm in my second month now and I'm close to getting my £750 bonus already and then build into a <laughs> is that a shameless plug for your business Sean I like that Sean says he, off he only charges uh, 99p per month for web hosting so if anyone would like web hosting, then speak to Sean Kelly. He's your man. Is that good enough, Sean? <laughs> I might speak to you afterwards, actually. Um, and then there are other things as well, other ways of earning. So, <laughs> smiley face, thank you. Um, residual income. So, you can, as long as you shop with them consecutively for three months in a row, um, you receive residual income. So, that's for life. You also receive 2% cash back on your own shopping for life. Um, so that bit is quite interesting to me as well because, to be honest, I mean, I don't know if anyone shops at, you know, Tesco or online or stuff, but I read an article recently that to get something like a £2.29 pack of biscuits, you would have to spend um, £229, you know, the Tesco club card points on the face of it look really good, but they don't offer bonuses like this you know they don't offer money like this this is a really really is easy business um ltw are really really relaxed as well as a company um you can pretty much use any advertising methods that you like um and there's also incentives to win a brand new car as well every single month so as long as you do your shopping by the 10th of every month um you're entered into a prize draw to receive a new car every single month as well that is they've also got um other incentives as well so for example if you buy a certain hamper um you're entered you can buy you for i think it's four months you can um go on holiday to dubai and i think they do a turkey one as well although i think they might have stopped that um and then there's also another hamper where if you buy that you put into a prize draw to win an apartment so there's lots and lots of ways of earning money. You know, this this is a business that you can do alongside anything that you do already. So I just thought I'd float that idea. Also, I mean, I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm not here to sell you any of my services whatsoever. Okay. Oksana's asked a question. I'll just finish this slide and then I'll, I'll follow up on... Um, following up <laughs> um i'm not here to sell you absolutely anything you know i, I want you to take this uh, webinar away and i want you to use it i'm going to, to send the people who have logged in and given up their time i'm going to send you all a recording so you can use it please feel free to share it as well you know I, I want you guys to use it and get value from it share it to your teams as well um the other thing i quite like as well is feedback so you know if you want to hit me with some constructive criticisms do it please do you know i'm presenting to a large group of people tomorrow I'm, I'm used to presenting i used to run the deloitte training school for them but i'm always open to feedback good or bad or should i say constructive um so feel free to hit me with it send me a message afterwards if you could please i, I won't share your feedback but it's just useful for me personally so that would be great that's all i ask and then people always ask me what I can do. So, you know, I've done lots and lots of training sessions for people where they've been bespoke. They've been group um, sessions for teams. You know, I can do webinars. I can do one-to-one -one training. I can do telephone, face-to-face -face coaching sessions. I can pretty much do anything. I've worked with 
a range of people from an individual one-man band up to um, large marketing teams for colleges and big companies. So I can pretty much work with anyone and everyone. So those are my contact details. You've got my phone number there. I've uh, got my email address. You can find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, as you know. Most of you know how to find me, stalk me, come find me. Okay, so Oksana's asked a really good question. So uh, first of all, thank you for doing the webinar. No problem. Um, a quick question about LTW. What are your tips on following up, especially if people don't reply to your initial first message? Okay, so I mean, this is probably a real big bugbear for most people. So I think in anything that you do when you're first in contact with someone, I think what I always try to do is firstly try to establish a <laughs> Sean Kelly. T -t I'm not going to repeat what Sean said. Um, firstly, um, any kind of business that you're in, it's all about numbers. You know, the 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 team leaders, the network marketers, the people who have got the biggest, biggest businesses, have got the biggest list, they've got the biggest followers. So I would say it's all about numbers, but then similarly, it's all about building a relationship. So what I do when I'm generating leads for a business, for example, is I try to put people into one place. So what I mean by that is I will get someone to either join my page I will get them to become a friend, I will get them to join my group, I will get them to join my mailing list, I will get them in one place, so then when you are following up to people, you can follow up as almost like a, a group message, you don't have to individually uh, reply to everyone, and the thing is, I mean, you saw that slide before, um, eight, you know, most sales are done, 80% of sales are done on the eighth, out on the eighth to 12th contact sorry I'll put my teeth in um, so you know it is all about the follow-up it is all about keeping in touch with people but similarly you're gonna get people that don't reply unfortunately people are sheep and it works like this if you put a post up and you get 10 people or you get less than that you get five people say that all want information and you're gonna get another five say 10 people who ask for information that might not even necessarily be interested in what you've got to offer, but they're asking because everyone else is asking and they don't want to miss out. So that's a good thing, but obviously you're going to get people in there who are going to be time wasters. Your job is to try and take the conversation offline, so try and get them on a call, try and get them on a one-to-one -one basis, try and build the relationship try and ask them what their goals are and um, try and warm that relationship up in a way that when you go and follow up with them, you can follow up on with them on a one-to-one -one basis on a personal level rather than, you know, Oi, have you looked at the information yet? You know, I do send a few of those occasionally because sometimes people do take the mickey and they don't respond. But Oksana, you know, you're going to get people ignoring, you're going to get people leaving you, you're going to get people... Um, blaming you, you're going to get all kinds of people to to be honest, so just work with the people that want it that's what I always say um, one of my quotes that I put up today run with the runners walk with the walkers and let the quitters quit, I think you know, you're going to get people who give up, um, try and help those people who are helping themselves and who want it really badly so that's my little section about follow up um, <laughs> thanks Sean no problem no problem Oksana um, give me a shout if you need any other help more than happy to help you um, does anyone else have any other questions I'm happy to stay on the line and answer any other questions that you've got I mean we've got some really senior people on the line so if you guys want to chip in on anything that I've said so I can kind of read it out to people, then by all means, please do. We've got Hayley on the line. I think she's she's pretty senior um, in network marketing. She's been network marketing for a number of years when we spoke. So, Hayley, if you've got anything to add to what I've said, then please feel free to add in. I don't know, Sean, you run a very successful business, so feel free to 
add or comment or anything not swearing <laughs> Okay guys, looks like you've either nodded off or you're all content and happy or maybe just a bit shy or whatever. Um, I am around, I'm always around, I'm always attached to my phone in some way, so I'm always accessible. If you've got any questions about anything that I do, if, you, if you've got any questions, if you want to do some networking together, if you want to find out about services that I offer if you're interested in Life Tree W. If you just want to ask any questions at all then feel free to contact me. I'm always open. You've got my contact details there. Uh, let's chat. Oh and feedback. Please feel free to send me feedback. Uh, Sean's doing another plug for his business. Okay does anyone else want to do plugs for their business? Sean's at uh, forward slash web dot guy dot co dot uk or is it web guy dot co dot uk Sean hyphen uh, sorry okay web hyphen guy dot co dot uk he's the man Okie dokie guys, I'm going to end it there but please feel free to send me a message with feedback, it's always really useful, um, I can take it on the chin if you thought it was rubbish um, but you've got to tell me what I could do to improve it, okay? <laughs> um, I'll send out the recording as soon as it's downloaded, I'll send you all out an email copy um, and then if you've got any questions just fire them to me. Okay, well, thanks, guys. Um, enjoy the rest of your evening, and I'm sure I'll speak to you most, most of you anyway soon. Okay, take care. <laughs> thanks, Sean. Take care, bye.